this is going to be a good strong contender for some of my favourite books of all time. I mean there's a lot of pressure to put on a book but and thank you for joining me it's Kirsten and today we have a rather large book haul going on so let's just get straight into this video because we have a lot of books to talk about and yes it is a large amount but it is my birthday in the month of May so I definitely been treating myself to some books especially with a recent book shopping trip that I did and you know what I had a good time with it all of these books I'm really excited to read so let's just get straight into it starting off with the ones that have been gifted I have The Witches Salem 1692 A History this is by Stacey and this was gifted to me from my sister. She read this one, really liked it and thought I would enjoy it and asked if I would want to read it. I of course agreed because this sounds awesome. I really want to learn more about the Salem witch trials and just witches in general, how women have been persecuted throughout history and defined as witches and things and how ridiculous it really was. I'm so interested in it. I have a cup, another non-fiction book about women's laws, the way things have changed, the women that started that and heralded the change, as well as a few other books that I have got my eye on that I would like to read. So I'm really happy to add this one to the collection. Like I say, I am really intrigued about this one. I really want to know more about it, especially because I recently read a non-fiction book about poisons, which spoke about how witch trials, the thing that that sparked it in Salem could have potentially actually been to do with poisoning and so it's just those sort of outlandish beliefs that people had because they didn't understand things at the time and how quickly it turned to witchcraft so I'm really excited to read more about this. Then I have a gift from Janice again thank you so much and she sent me Middlemarch by George Eliot which I'm very excited about. It is a massive chunky classic book but it is meant to be one that's really good and this one was described by Virginia Woolf as one of the few English novels written for grown-up people which sounds really good but in this one we're following from the looks of things a couple two main characters whether there's more or not I'm not sure but one of them is Dorothea who wants to improve the world but finds her idealism crushed by a, her unhappy marriage and we also have Dr Lydgate whose shallow spendthrift wife threatens his dreams of medical progress and this is meant to be a panoramic suite that ranges over the whole of the human existence I mean it's a big enough book that it could do that so I'm really excited for it hoping that it's going to be a really good read I don't know I've got high expectations for this one and I think it will be a good time. I then have three books from my dad for my birthday. Uh, so we have, actually all of these are short story collections. So we've got Roarings from Further Out which is four weird novellas by Algernon Blackwood. This caught my attention because I recently read The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher who was inspired by The Willows by Algernon Blackwood and I was really looking for a collection that had this because I knew it was a short story, I knew it wasn't really printed on its own. I went to a couple of bookshops and was asking around and they had some collections but not the one with The Willows and then we went into Foils and they had two of Algernon's collections, one of which had The Willows and my dad got me this one. I'm really looking forward to it. It's meant to be really weird horror, like sci-fi weird horror, which sounds really good. I think this is going to be brilliant because I really liked The Willows in The Hollow Places so I'm really intrigued to see the inspiration that is behind The Willows in this. So I think it's going to be really good. I'm looking forward to it because I mean I like a classic gothic story anyway so this is already ticking all the boxes. So the other ones that are in here we have Ancient Sorceries, the Wendigo, The Man Whom the Trees Love. I think it's going to be really good. It's not that long, the collection. It's what, 280-ish pages? You'll have to let me know if you've read any of Algernon Blackwood. It's not an author I'd ever heard of before until I read The Hollow Places and I was reading the acknowledgements and that's when it was mentioned. Prior to that, I'd never even heard of it, but I have really high expectations for this. I then have Irish Gothic Fairy Stories. This is Tales from the 32 Counties of Ireland. And I was really intrigued by this one because I'm trying to read more fairy tales and folklore stories. I already love gothic stories so the fact that that's all kind of tied together is brilliant in my mind. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one. This one's an interesting one because it's not just the stories that we get but it's also a little bit of information about each of the counties. So you'll get a little bit of information of each county and then the story 
that has come from that county which I think is really good. We also have lots of illustrations throughout and I just think this is going to be a really good one to dip in and out of. It's probably not one that I'm going to sit and read all in one sitting but definitely one that I will pick up and put down. So yeah I'm really really happy I've got that. And then the last one my dad got me is Celtic Weird The Tales of Wicked Folklore and Dark Mythology and this is a collection that the British Library put together and we have three stories from each of these places. So you've got three from Scotland, then we have Ireland, Brittany, the Isle of Man, Wales, Cornwall and Gaelic, which again, I mean, I've, I said it already with the previous collection, I really am wanting to read more and expand my fairy tale and folklore collection. I'm, I'm really pleased with this one, so I, I think it's going to be a really good time and it's so gorgeous. Like, the green and gold is absolutely stunning. Honestly, these authors, like, I haven't heard of before. You've got Edith Wharton, who I've heard of but I've not read from. Arthur Machen, who I have read from, really like Arthur Machen's work. And that's it, they're the only two authors that I know of in here, so I'm really excited to read stories from other authors and if I enjoy them I can look more into their works. Short story collections are always a bit of a hit and miss because sometimes you'll get some which are really great, other times you'll get ones where it's just not quite Oh my god, this lighting. Okay, I don't know whether that's fixed or not, but yeah, lighting's going in and out like crazy. But yeah, so short story collections always can be a bit of hit and miss because you can always have some that you just don't get on with, some that you really adore. Sometimes you'll get a collection which is just perfect and all of them are great. So it's just a bit of a mixed bag, really. But I have high hopes for these three collections and I'm really pleased to add them to my collection. So yeah, I'm very, very happy with those. Then I've got a couple of books that I found thrifted. So I got both of these from Free Libraries, which was really Really good. The first one is Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. This is a really unusual edition of the book. It's the World Book Night 2011 edition. Um, I've never heard of these editions before but this one I picked up because of Katie over at Books and Things because she recently spoke about going through Sarah Waters' backlist and really enjoying their works and you know saying that you know they're a really good author. Now I do like historical fiction but I've really got to be in the mood to read them. A bit like classics. I know I enjoy classics but I've got to be in the mood to read them. With this one I don't really know anything about this one. I've just heard Sarah Waters is really good and this is the one that I found. So you'll have to let me know if you've read any Sarah Waters whether this is a good one to start off with. But Fingers Smith, it is London 1862. Sue, orphaned at birth, grows up among petty thieves, fingersmiths, under the rough but loving care of Mrs. Suxby. But from the moment she draws breath, Sue's fate is linked to that of another orphan growing up in a gloomy mansion not too many miles away. Sounds interesting. I like the idea of the setting in London. But we'll see. You'll have to let me know if you've read this one and what you thought of it, if it's a good place to start with Sarah Waters. I know I wanted to try some of their works. Initially, I was just going to get it from the library, but the fact that that was at a free library, you know, win-win. Then we have the second book from the free library, which is The Cat and the Corpse in the Old Barn by Katie Hyde. Katie High has written many cosy mysteries, which is what this is. This is the start of a new cosy mystery series. I've never read anything by Katie High, but I saw this paperback, paperback? No, hardback in pristine condition. And I was like, okay, we're just gonna have to give this a try. I love cosy murder mysteries. I find them so entertaining. I'm looking forward to hopefully finding a new cosy mystery author that I really like. I haven't read anything by Katie High. I haven't heard anyone talking about them actually saying that my sister did tell me that she'd read this one and it was a fun time so we'll see. But it seems on Goodreads like she's got very few ratings so it could be an underrated cosy murder mystery author. Who knows? Regardless I think it'll be a fun time. Like I genuinely really enjoy cosy murder mysteries. I don't have that high expectations when it comes to them because I'm just like, are you cozy? Do you have murder? Is it a fun time? Yes, well then you've won. Very rare that I don't enjoy them, so I'm expecting to like this one. Now we're getting into the books that I purchased and we have a few manga. Some of the manga actually, these two manga, I purchased from Books Please, which is an online bookstore, a bit like Book Depository, where it ships to a lot of countries. They have a set shipping rate regardless of how many books that you buy. Basically, they reached out to me with a affiliate link and I decided to give them a try and honestly I really liked them. The shipping was a little bit slower than somewhere like Amazon but the prices are the same as Amazon if not cheaper so it worked out really well. So if you are interested in picking up any books yourself and you would like to use it I have a link in the description below. You get 5% off and I get a little bit of commission at no extra charge so it's win-win for everybody but I did get two manga that I've been struggling to get hold of so I was really pleased that they have them. That's Moriarty the Patriot Volume 5 
5 and volume 7. Moriarty the Patriot is a manga series that looks at Moriarty, Sherlock Holmes' nemesis, and how he became mastermind nemesis that Sherlock has to try and defeat. Really like this series, really looking forward to continuing, but have been struggling just to get the different volumes. So when I saw them available on Books Please, I automatically got those. I also have Yona of the Dawn. This is volume one that I picked up because of Katie different Katie, I'll have both their channels linked below, um, but she fell in love with this series and just kind of devoured pretty much the whole series in one go. It's a massive series and she spoke about it enough times that I was intrigued to give it a try. I don't know if this is the sort of manga that I would like. It's not typically the sort of thing I go for. I tend to like things that are a little bit more darker, but we're going to give it a try. This is basically a historical romance. We'll try it. We'll see what we think. And then I got Dead Man's Wonderland volume 6 because me and my partner are buddy reading this series together and I needed the next volume. This one is set in Japan and we have this prison where people are put in there and to raise funds for Japan they put on these games and people watch them and it brings in loads and loads of money. What people don't realise is that these games are deadly. It's a good series, I like it, reading that one with my partner. Then I have Daughter of the Forest by Juliet Marillia. This is May's Discord book club pick. For those of you that don't know I do have a Discord channel and we have a book club every single month and this is the one that won for May. I'm really excited to start this one. I think by the time this video comes up I may have started it but I think it's going to be a new favourite for me. It's got the vibes. I really think this is going to be a good strong contender for some of my favourite books of all time. I mean there's a lot of pressure to put on a book but I'm hoping because I've heard it's got really beautiful writing, it's got a dark forest setting and it's also kind of based on a bit of folklore so it's kind of winning for everything. So yeah I'm really pleased to get to this one. I don't want to know too much about it but I do know that we are following Lady Una who is a sorceress as fair as day but a heart as black as night and she captivates Sorcia's father and sons but cannot captivate Sorcia and so Sorcia is cursed. I'm really looking forward to reading it. I think it's going to be a really good time. Plus we're matching. I love this. It's one that I've been meaning to read for absolute ages and I'm really grateful it came up as a book club pick to actually make me read it. I then have Magnolia Parks Into the Dark by Jessa Hastings. This is the fifth book in the Magnolia Park series and that is a series I binge read last year. I don't know. I, I mean this is not a good book. I would not recommend this. It's like a car crash that you just can't look away from but I loved it <laughs> and it really is that it is just a messy rich people drama romance book and even the romance is the most toxic thing ever but you have two different things. So you've got Magnolia Parks books and then Daisy Hates books. So it goes Magnolia Parks 1, Daisy Hates and then Magnolia Parks and so all the odd ones are progressing the story and the even books with Daisy Hate looks over the same events but from Daisy Hates perspective with her own love mess thing that's going on and I adored it. I was heartbroken with where the fourth book left. Like it was so devastating so I'm really looking forward to reading the fifth book. I think it's going to be fantastic. So it is a chunky one, but I really am looking forward to reading this one. They're not the best written, but they're just so entertaining. So it's it's good time. I also picked up The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett, which is actually the Discord book club for June. So again, if you'd like to take part, it'll be linked below for you. But yes, very excited about this one. This is meant to be a fantasy murder mystery. That is how I've heard it pitched before. We're following a main character that is a bit like a Watson who ends up with a Sherlock Holmes-esque character but the difference is is the murder they're trying to solve is the fact that a tree erupted from somebody's body. It sounds really unusual but so good. I've heard nothing but good reviews about this book so I'm really looking forward to giving this one a read. So yeah, really pleased this one came up for June's pick. I then have An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. This is a Camilla retelling so I I enjoyed S.T. Gibson's Dracula retelling which was a dowry in blood. Really enjoyed what she did with that book. This one is the same thing but with Camilla and slightly different so we've got more of a dark academia setting with Camilla inspirations by Sheridan Lofano. So I'm really intrigued to give this one a read. I would like to read it soon, hopefully in June, if I can get it onto the TBR game, because it just sounds like it's gonna be a perfect read for then. So I don't know, I have high hopes for it. I'm looking forward to it. It's vampires 
dark academia, it sounds like a great time. Definitely one I want to be reading soon. I then pre-ordered The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. I've already read this one, really enjoyed this book. It was so much fun. This is a young adult thriller and I devoured it within 24 hours. I read it as part of my Tackle Your TBR readathon, which is a bi-monthly 24-hour readathon that I host. I will have the playlist linked below if you're interested in learning any more about it. But yeah, I adored this. It was so much fun and we're following Belle who was abandoned as a baby. Her mother went missing and she was just left in the car. Nobody knows what happened and that is when and Rachel makes a reappearance many years later when they're making a documentary about the fact that she went missing and she suddenly reappears. It's so good. I had so much fun with this one. I also pre-ordered The Familiars by Leah Bardugo. This one I'm intrigued by. I mainly picked it up because that cover screams vampires to me so I'm really hoping there are vampires in this. It's just giving me all the vampire vibes. I've heard a couple of reviews that seem to be quite good. Leah Bardugo is definitely an author that's a bit hit and miss with me. I liked Ninth House but didn't like their YA stuff. I'm hoping because this is their adult standalone I'm going to really like this one. I have high expectations for it. I think it's going to be a really good read. So fingers crossed, I really like that one as well. Although I'm devastated that as much as I pre-ordered it, I didn't get the really nice sprayed edged edition, which if I'd like this book, I'm going to spray the edges myself, but it would have been nice to have got the sprayed edge edition. Um, and then I also have The Prisoner's Throne by Holly Black. This is the second book to the duology that started off with The Stolen Air. I liked The Stolen Air. I thought it was a really fun time. So this is a spin-off to the Folk of the Air trilogy that started with The Cool Prince. Didn't think I was going to like that and then binge read the trilogy last year and loved it. Recently read The Stolen Air this year. Really want to continue on and finish out The Prisoner's Throne. I enjoyed it. I like the characters that we're following, especially because one of the characters is a side character that we meet in the Folk of the Air trilogy that I was always a really curious about so it was really fun to read The Stolen Air and have it from her perspective. It was, re I really enjoyed that, I'm not gonna lie. And I think this one instead is from Prince Oak's perspective. So I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. I have heard it's actually really different to The Stolen Air, that it's got a very different vibe, that it feels a bit more like Cruel Prince. So I to give it a try and see what I think. But I don't know, I really like the way Holly Plack depicts the fae and fairies and stuff. It's really true to folklore, so I, I enjoy it. It's a really fun time. Do I think they're the best written things? No, but I really do enjoy them. So I'm looking forward to giving this one a read as well. We're down to the last pile. Now we have a lot of the books that I got from when I went book shopping the other day. So we have Orpheus Builds a Girl by Heather Parry. This is a book I had my eye on when it first came out, but never ended up picking up. And then I recently watched Willow's video where she was recommending book based on Frankenstein. And this was in there. And I was like, oh, well, no, I have to because I love Frankenstein and I was told by Willow if you like Frankenstein you're gonna love this so I bought it I'm very excited for it. So this one we are following. Wilhelm von Tor is dying. As he looks back on his life, he reflects on his youth in Dresden, his grandmother and his medical career during World War II. But mostly he remembers his darling Lucy, the dark haired beauty promised to him years before they met. Though only together for a few months in her first life, Wilhelm knows that their love is written in the stars and he ensures that death is only the beginning. But through the cracks in Wilhelm's story, there is a another voice, that of Gabriella, and she will not let this version of events go unchallenged. She tells instead the story of her fearless sister Luciana and the madman who robbed her from the grave. It sounds so good. Oh, I'm so excited to read it. I think that book's going to be fantastic. Then we have, ah, oh, the other Algernon Blackwood collection, which is The Unknown, which is weird writings from 1900 to 1937. Got various different short stories in here by Algernon Blackwood. Some that are like The Wolves of God, The Glamour in the Snow, The Genesis of Ideas, just like lots of different different ones. It's a nice collection, like I like this edition as well. In foils they had this one and one that my dad got me and you know what, I decided to get both because I like a good gothic short story collection. Yeah, this was good. I'm really pleased that I've got it and I mean I've already spoken about this author so weird and gothic-y short stories sound great to me. Talking about gothic, we have Shirley Jackson's We Have Always Lived in the Castle. This I'm going to be reading for a video which is coming out in July so keep your eyes peeled for that one. Really excited to read this one have been wanting to read this 
story for a long time just never got around to reading it and now I finally have the push to read it. I don't know too much about this one except it is a horror story and I am a wuss so we're gonna see how I get on with it but it's only a short one. It is less than 150 pages so I think it's gonna be a good time. You'll have to let me know if you've read it. I mean let me know of all of these if you've read them and what you thought of them but I'll be interested to see how scary I actually find this because as I say I am a bit of a wuss. I then have two books that my dad recommended to me. So we have Father Brown Selected Stories by G.K. Chesterton. I've never heard of this before, but apparently it's a good one for cozy murder mysteries. We are following Father Brown makes for an improbable detective and we're just following different cases. Again, I like a good short story collection, I like a good cozy mystery, so it seems like it will be a fun time. And I really liked this cover actually, it was really striking. Pleased with that. Then we have Angels of Music by Kim Newman. Kim Newman does a couple of kind of retellings in a way of classics. So this one is Phantom of the Opera, also done one of Dracula, but I haven't read this one. And this one is Deep in the Shadows under the Paris Opera House resides Eric the Phantom. Mysterious enduring through the decades as the mastermind behind a strange and secret agency. A revolving door of female agents are charged by wealthy Parisians and the French government to investigate crimes and misdemeanors that they would prefer to keep out of the public eye. So it's kind of like a Mickey take on it, I guess. I don't know. We're going to give it a try. See what I think. Again, let me know if you've read this one and what you thought of it. I then have The Wolf Gift by Anne Rice. This is a book I've been eyeing up for a long time and then decided, you know what, I'm just going to get it because I loved it interview with the vampire so much that is one of my ultimate favorite books ever like if you ask me what my favorite book is I'm gonna give you that book this one is Anne Rice's werewolf book I haven't heard of it before I saw it in the bookshop a few months back was really tempted to get it decided not to thought I'd wait at least read the vampire Lestat first then I decided you know what I'm just gonna get it I'm expecting beautiful writing the same sort of questions of morality but just with werewolves instead of vampires so again let me know if you've read this one and what you thought of it I think it's going to be a fantastic book then we have Catch 22 by Joseph Heller I've not heard of this one but apparently it's a really good book and it's all about life and like being stuck in a loop and how I think one of the ones the examples that I was given is you have a fighter pilot in world war that is dropping bombs but they are serving their country and they're just following their orders but at the same time they're still killing people so it's like a catch-22 situation so apparently it looks at those sort of morals but I, I really don't know much about this one so you'll have to let me know if you've read it what you think of it yeah I'm gonna give it a try it, it sounded intriguing enough that I decided to pick it up but I genuinely don't know what this is about although the writing in this is absolutely awful <laughs> oh my god it is so tiny wall to wall but please let me know if you've read this one and if you would recommend and like if I should put it higher up on my TBR I think at the minute it's definitely one that I'm intrigued by but it's not compared to all of these it's not the highest on the list it does sound interesting I think I'm just gonna have to be in the right mood my camera had enough and it just cut me off I don't know what I was saying but basically let me know if you've read this one and if it should be higher up on my TBR and I'm gonna have to find a synopsis somewhere and actually read it because I don't know it was sold to me in the bookshop so we'll we're just going with that <laughs> then we have the last man by mary shelley i did actually have this one but it was a really battered edition and the text was really tiny i decided to treat myself to this new edition that they've done which is the rediscovered classics because it actually fit my edition of lador by mary shelley so i really like these rediscovered classic editions and i am on a bit of a mary shelley binge like i love frankenstein i love lador um, i've read some of her short stories so i would really like to read more by her and the last man is her dystopian work so really really looking forward to reading this one and I would like to read it soon I feel like because it's in a nicer edition now I will have more of a chance of reading this one also yes the dogs are going off on one but that's fine we are slowly getting there I have a botanical daughter by Noah Medlock this is again a book I had my eye on for ages and then Willow spoke about it in the if you like Frankensteins read these books uh, so of course I bought it I'm so excited to read this one this was actually on one of my 
my anticipated releases. I just never got round to actually purchasing a copy. I, I really am excited to read this one. I'm really curious. It is an unusual thing to live in a botanical garden, but Simon and Gregor are an unusual pair of gentlemen. Hidden away from the disapproving tattle of Victorian London, they are free to follow their own interests without interference. For Simon, this means work in his taxidermical art. Gregor's business is exotic plants, lucrative but harmless enough. Until his latest acquisition, a strange fungus which shows signs of intelligence beyond any plant he's seen, inspires him to attempt a masterwork. True intelligent life from plant matter. It sounds so good. I really can't wait to read this one. You can tell I've been influenced by Willow a lot. And then we have The Twisted Ones by T. Kingfisher. I picked this one up because when we were reading the Hollow Places for the Discord book club pick, a couple people in there said how they'd also read The Twisted Ones and actually preferred The Twisted Ones to The Hollow Places, but that the horror in The Hollow Places reminded them a little bit of this. I decided to get it. I mean, I really like T. Kingfisher books anyway. They're always an easy read. Like they're nothing standout all time favorites for me, but they're always intriguing enough that I want to read them. And this is the next one I wanted to read anyway. So when people were talking about how they actually preferred this to Hollow Places, very intrigued, but I don't know what this one is about. Follow in, Mouse. When Mouse's dad asks her to clean out her dead grandmother's house, she says yes. After all, how bad could it be? Answer, pretty bad. Grandma was a hoarder and her house is stuffed with useless rubbish. That would be horrific enough, but there's more. Mouse stumbles across her step-grandfather's journal, which at first seems to be filled with nonsensical rants, until Mouse encounters some of the terrifying things he described for herself. Sounds pretty good. I mean, I really like T. Kim Fisher's writing. I like her horror books in particular, so really looking forward to reading more. We have four more books to go. Of course, I had to get an Agatha Christie book. We have A Pocket Full of Rye. This is continuing on with my Miss Marple read. By the time this video comes out, I would have done my murder mystery weekly reading vlog where I read an Agatha Christie book and I always like making sure I have a couple on my TBR. So had to get the next one to continue on with that. Cozy murder mystery. I don't think I need to talk about Agatha Christie books because, well, she was very prolific and pretty famous for it. Honestly, I'm terrified that this stack of books is just gonna fall on me but we're rolling. We then have The God of Endings by Jacqueline Holland. This is a book I've had my eye on for absolutely ages. So when I saw it in Forbidden Planet with £3 off, I had to get it. I'm really excited about this one. This is another vampire book. It's been recommended a few times to me, so I'm really excited to have this one. We are following Colette, is a lonely artist who heads an elite fine art school for children in upstate New York. Her youthful beauty makes the dark truth of her life. She has endured centuries of turmoil and heartache in the wake of her grandfather's long ago decision to make her immortal like himself. Now in 1984, Colette finds her life upended by the arrival of a gifted child from a troubled home, the return of a stalking presence from her past, and her own mysteriously growing hunger for blood. It sounds really good. I love a vampire book and I'm so pleased vampire books seem to be making an appearance, like a reappearance, a resurgence. We're getting there. We then have Nona the Ninth by Tamsin Moore. I recently read Gideon the Ninth and fell in love with it. I adored it. I already own Harrow the Ninth, so of course I had to have Nona the Ninth so I can continue on. I love this so much. In the first book we're following Gideon who is trying to escape from the Ninth Planet. There are different planets, all of them with different necromancer abilities and Gideon's trying to escape the Ninth. Harrow stops this from happening and she is the princess of the Ninth and instead makes Gideon become her bodyguard to this kind of competition of sorts. It's so good. I absolutely loved it an all-time new favourite for me. I cannot wait to continue on with the series and knew that as soon as I finish Harrow the Ninth, I'm going to want to make sure I've got Nona the Ninth ready to go. I had to get it. And just look, look how gorgeous they are. And these are so floppy. Oh, they're, they're just amazing. I love these so freaking much. Um, yeah, okay. Future Kirsten coming in here to say that I completely lied when I said I was down to the last book. And let's go through some extra books. So I'm filming this 12th of May. As of 12th of May, I have officially shown you every single book that I have hauled since the very last book haul to now. Some of these are gifts and two I got myself. One was from a free library and one was £3. So, like I tend to do, let's just start off with the gifts. 
So my mum got me three books for my birthday, which I am so thankful for, which the day of me filming this a little bit, it is my birthday. Thank you so much to my mum for these. I'm very excited. We have The Beholders by Hester Musson. This is a book that was on my radar because of Katie over at Books and Things. She spoke about this one. She's also blurbed this one. And I was really intrigued from when she first spoke about this. And then my mum picked it up randomly. I didn't even tell her that this was one that I was interested in. But this is one that she got me and I'm so thankful because I've been really interested in this one. This is a historical thriller which just sounds amazing. It's set in 1878 and we have a bit of a mystery about the body of a boy that's been pulled from the Thames which is connected to something that was happening four months earlier than this where we're following Harriet Watkins, our main character, and she is newly employed at Finton Hall and she gets a bit enamoured by the mistress, Clara Gethin, but things are not quite as they seem. It sounds really good. I'm really intrigued. I'm looking forward to all the spooky, dark, atmospheric vibes of this book. Whether it's actually going to be supernatural spooky or whether it's just unsettling, creepy atmosphere, I don't know. All I know is I'm really excited to read this one and I would like to get to it soon. So thank you to my mum. Then we have two books that I've never heard of before, but both sound really good and really interesting. We have an Edwardian heist story, which is The Housekeepers by Alex Hay. This seems like it's gonna be a lot of fun. We have loyal housekeeper, Mrs. King, who was suddenly dismissed. And so she's gonna set out and get her revenge with the help of some women who have nothing left to lose and every reason for revenge. And they're going to steal everything from underneath her ex-employer's nose. It sounds absolutely hilarious. It sounds like it's gonna be one of those books where it's just going to be a really fun, fast-paced, entertaining read. So I'm really excited to read this one. I think it's going to be perfect for like after my early shifts at work when I just want a book that I can just binge read and just kind of escape into where I don't have to think too much about like politics and things like that. I think this is going to be a really good book for that. So I'm very excited. And then continuing on with the blue theme, we have Justin Cronin's The Ferryman, which sounds really unusual and I have not read anything by this author. I've never heard of this. So please let me know if you have read this and what you thought of it. It sounds really intriguing. It seems like we're on this kind of island that is isolated from the rest of humanity. It's, it seems perfect. It's surrounded by sun, sea and stars but it says every paradise comes at a cost and when the truth behind theirs is revealed it will end their way of life and start a revolution and it all began with one person hearing these simple words the world is not the world and that just has me gripped I instantly want to know what the heck is going on with this book I've got no idea what sort of genre this fits into we do have Andy Ware that's blurbed it as well as Blake Crouch and Stephen King so I've got no idea where this sits genre wise but I am really intrigued and you can best believe the minute I'm done updating this video I am going to be looking this one up to find out more about this one because I'm really intrigued by this one. Like the other two are going to be good reads like dark atmospheric thriller sounds amazing, a fun heist story also sounds hilarious. So these are going to be great but this one I'm just intrigued because I don't know anything about it and that blurb is really intriguing me and wanting me to find out more so I would like to get to this one really soon so please let me know if you've read this one. And then we've got two other gifts from Uniquely DJ. So thank you so much for these. I'm really excited for these. One of them I've already read, that's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. Of course, a gothic classic. I do love my gothic classics and I really wanted it in this edition. So I am collecting the English Library classics. I really enjoy them. I have like three main classics that I like to collect, but if I can, I like to get them in the English Library edition. Like they're my top favorite to get. So I'm so thankful that I've got this so I can swap out the edition that I did have. You know, it was fine, but it's not my favourite. It was really good because it came as part of a box set and so I was able to read Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and it also came with a couple of other short stories which are really interesting, but I'm so thankful just to have this edition for my collection. I love it. I love this story. It was definitely one that I would reread, would highly recommend. And you know, if you're interested in getting into classics but don't know where to start, it's a nice short size and it's interesting and it's one of those ones that's inspired so much in our contemporary media, especially horror-wise. And then we have The Crow Garden by Alison Littlewood and this one is a look at an asylum and we're seeing it from a doctor's perspective and everything kind of sparks because there's this woman that's been put into the asylum by her husband 
husband. And the husband tells one story and she tells another story and the doctor kind of becomes a bit enamored and stuck in the middle of it all. Really intrigued. I actually really like books that look at asylums and the way that they were used and how it was very commonplace for women to be put in them not just because they needed help but because they were seen as an inconvenience to the men in their lives and yeah I, I really am excited to read this one and I think it'll be a good time. So those were all the gifts so thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. Now let's get into the book that I thrifted. So this one is The Wager. This is a tale of shipwreck and mutiny and murder by David Gran. This is one that my sister recommended to me. Sounded really interesting. It's a non-fiction about this ramshackle vessel washes up on the coast of Brazil and inside are 30 emaciated men barely alive, survivors of the wager, a British vessel that was wrecked while on a secret mission to raid a Spanish treasure field galleon and they have an extraordinary tale to tell. However, six months later an even more decrepit boat arrives on the shore of Chile containing just three castaways and they have a completely different story to tell. It sounds really good and I was reading the start of this one when I found it because at work we have a free library and so like just the author's note gripped me then I read a little bit of the prologue and I'm just I'm instantly hooked. I would really like to get to this one soon as well. I say that about all my books and I know that, but genuinely I am always excited for all of them. And then the last one I got recently, literally a couple days ago, is Death Comes to Marlow by Robert Thorogood. This was three pounds. It's normally meant to be 9 99 How could I pass this up? It's three pounds. And this is the second book to the Marlow Murder Club and I loved the first book. I adored it. If you like Richard Osman's The Thursday Murder Club, pick up The Marlowe Club because oh my god it's so good. I loved that book so much. Read it last month, really enjoyed it and I could not wait to get a physical copy of that book and continue the series. However, I don't have the first book yet but when I saw the second book in the works, for three pounds? There was no way I was leaving it behind. I don't wanna know what this one is about. I know it's gonna be a cozy murder mystery. I know I like the characters. I can't wait to continue on with the series. And again, I would like to get to it soon. The inevitable suit. But now let's go back to Past Curson, finally giving you the last book of this book haul. And lastly, we have Fruit of the Dead by Rachel Lyon. This is another book I really want to read soon. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling, but from Persephone and Demeter's perspective, done in a contemporary setting. So we are following Persephone, who is actually Corey. She is 18 and aimless and afraid to face her high strung single mother in New York. She's no longer sure where home is when the father of one of her campers offers an alternative because Corey is a camp counsellor. My battery is flashing at me. I hope it lasts till the end. Let's try. Um, but the, basically the father is a CEO of this pharmaceutical company and ensues a very toxic romance and you have her mother who is portraying Demeter traveling to try and rescue her daughter and you're seeing it from both of their perspectives. I'm expecting really good things. Okay we got that done. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I know this is a massive book haul. It always is around May time because it's my birthday and I like to treat myself. But thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you've read any of these. If you've made it this far, let's stick a little book stack emoji because I am surrounded. If you've enjoyed it, please give it that thumbs up, subscribe and comment. Those three things really help this channel out. My social media links and anyone I've mentioned will be linked below for you. And I will catch you in the very next video. That is the fastest I have ever done it, but I made it. My camera made it.